Hello, all you positive heads out there. It's so good to be back with all you beautiful reflections of the one source consciousness that creates and animates all things. If you're new to this podcast, of course, we are super happy to have you here. And we just ask that you bring an open mind and heart to your listening experience and to be prepared to explore vantage points that I'm convinced will help shift or solidify your current understanding of the ultimate nature of reality in a way that is extremely empowering. Speaking of exploring powerful perspectives, I'm super excited to announce the release of my very first book, The Golden Key, Modern Alchemy to Unlock Infinite Abundance. If you're ready to alchemize the circumstances in your life so that your abundance expands to an entirely new level in 2021, Head over to goldenkey.gift to download the audio or ebook as my gift to you by using the code POSITIVEHEAD. All right, all you positive heads, welcome, welcome. Here we grow again. It is a magical Monday here in the studio as I record. And as always, I am so grateful to be back with you guys. It's been a minute since... I've recorded, I've been playing some flashback episodes because I was deep in the COVID chrysalis. I went, uh, took a little trip and everyone around me came down with COVID. After several years of it being out there, I contracted it for the first time and yeah, made a full recovery now. It was, um, for me, the toughest thing was a really sore throat. Um, And so of course, recording was not... um, very attractive to do during that time. Um, luckily, there's plenty of good flashback episodes to share. But um, yeah, it was um, that was the main thing for me was you know weakness and and super sore throat. But feeling feeling back, uh, you know, back and better than ever. I've got the the COVID expansion pack in my in my system and uh, ready to take on the new year. And you know, I was thinking about. Uh, with what I would talk about today, thinking about, you know, of course, the holidays and having just been around a lot of family and, and friends and how a lot of times, you know, um, conflict will come up during this time for a lot of people. And, you know, whether it's with family members, or even we think of, you know, getting in that big fight with your close friend. And it's one of those things that we, we all are aware of, um, this idea that we sort of lash out with, to those we're closest at sometimes. And I saw a, a quote by Jeff Brown that I, I really liked that spoke to this, uh, that speaks to this. And so I thought I would share and talk a little bit about it today. Um, and I'm sure it's very present for a lot of you out there with the holidays and having, you know, more time with family and off work, et cetera. But um, Jeff said, as friendship grows closer, Conflict becomes more difficult to avoid. And this is often a good thing because the closer we get to each other's hearts, the more triggers rise into view because you can't fully know someone until you ignite each other's fire because you won't know if a connection has legs until it has been tested by conflict. And when it is, there's a choice to be made. Walk away in disgust or walk toward it in an effort to deepen the connection. Conflict isn't the adversary of connection. Fear of confrontation is. I love that. Conflict isn't the adversary of connection. Fear of confrontation is. And how often have you seen it, you know, when the going gets rough, when there's a conflict, people that just easily tap out or bow out. Um, And then I think of, you know, I can think of situations like that, even one in, in recent months for me where, you know, there's some level of conflict and they're just gone, you know out, nothing to say, you you know, me reaching for any resolution, not really, um, not really even responding to that. And not to say it couldn't happen down the road, but at least in the short term, you know, it's like, oh, okay, got it. You know, and then you think of someone like uh, maybe conflicts with someone like my brother, as an example, you know, the amount of conflicts I've had with him and the amount of resolution and obstacles to overcome through the years, through the the immaturity and, you know, things that have happened in the past that now I cringe at that maybe I did, you know, and, and, and I'm sure vice versa on his end. So, you know, it's like when you really, really care, you're looking for some resolution. You're looking for a way, um, 
and, and understanding, it, it just is such a shift to think, oh, hold on. Um, you can't really know someone until you ignite each other's fire because really, you know, all relationship is about growth and growth comes from those challenges that, you know, back to the smooth seas never made for a skilled sailor and we all came to be skilled sailors. Or the Rumi quote, you know, how will you, your mirror be polished if it is annoyed by every rub? And so whether it's romantic relationship, family relationship, friendship, um, you know, it, 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 conflict becomes sort of inevitable at some point. And this is how we get to get to do the work together, you know, and, and those things that really push our buttons. And, you know, if you just run for the hills to avoid conflict, um, fear of confrontation really um, is the is the adversary of connection. It really is. If you're someone who's not willing to, you know, how many people just do and say things just to avoid conflict? And then meanwhile, they're because they don't want to um, have confrontation, but at what cost, right? And I found that the clearer we can communicate, the more we can communicate, the better everyone is. And it's not always easy, but I found if you're really communicating and you're coming from your heart and saying, hey, you know, I understand your perspective is different. Here's mine and here's why. And I'm not even trying to convince you that I'm right and you're wrong. I just want you to at least understand where I'm coming from. And I'm going to do the best to understand where you're coming from. And I think that is really, you know, that really shows a person who's done the work and is in a place where they, they you know, there's some maturity there about, and they're always open to hearing and seeing w what the other's experience is. Yeah, I know some of you, this, this, like I said, rings a bell and is uh, timely, I would imagine, with the holidays upon us. And um, I actually found a, um, a really great clip uh, from Abraham talking about this. How It's entitled, How to Let Conflict Work for You and Raise Your Vibration. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's a good one and worth sharing. So let's take a quick listen. I've been waiting 26 years for this moment. <laughs> Today is oh. my birthday. Every day is your birthday. Every day is my birthday. Because every day, source is flowing abundance every day. Most definitely. But we're out of time. Yes. <laughs> oh. Well, it, this is as good as it gets. Yeah. And the, the other gentleman, you really answered just about So everything. this is just greediness. This is, yeah. We recommend this. This is, this is receiving recommend. all that the universe has for yeah. me. Yeah, and um, I was first introduced to you in 1991, and I was told that I was dying or that I was gonna die, but obviously that didn't happen because I'm here talking to you now. So, <laughs> and uh, I was given a cassette, so I'm really dating myself how far back that was. Um, so we've been together for a long time. Yeah. And it's just a little bit of, Piggybacking on what you were talking about, I just wanted you to speak a little bit more about uh, contrast because things are going really, really well for me. Let's give it a new word, just for fun. Remember it always. Just for fun. <laughs> Clarifying trust. <laughs> Clarifying trust. Or you could call it clarifying crap. Mm -hmm. But contrast, clarification. Clarification is what contrast is. It's and, the, just, and the right relationship to have with contrast. Adoration. Appreciation. It's necessary to step one. It's essential to step one. And without the question, there cannot be an answer. Without contrast, there cannot be asking for more. Contrast puts the eternalness in eternity. It matters so much. It matters so much that you said, me, 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 I want to go, I want to go, I want to go into the contrast, into the leading edge contrast. Because I want to be a viable integral part of taking thought beyond where it has ever been before. Contrast is such a good thing. Not just good, necessary. Not just good, essential. It's like when you go to a buffet and there's that variety. And even though there are things that you don't want to eat, you don't say to them, throw all of that away. I don't want it there. Well, just don't put it on your plate. Well, it might get on my plate by accident. I might not be watching what I'm doing and I might get it on my plate. Well, pay attention to what you're doing. Don't put stuff on your plate that you don't want. 
And if you get something in your mouth and it doesn't taste good, don't do it again. <laughs> Would Abraham speak to, well, when I arrived here on the planet, all the big people that were already here that were taking care of all of my needs and housing and making sure I was fed, if I cried, if I were hungry, said that it's unrealistic for you to expect to not have a little rain with sunshine and, and all of our songs and lyrics and everything speaks to this phenomenon of where it's almost delusional to think that things can always be good and then be more good and then be more good. Let's put this into a very clear perspective. Of course, we've established that contrast exists, but from contrast, there will be a vibrational bounce that is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Because out of knowing what you don't want, you know what you do want. And when you focus upon what you do want, you get more of that. And so when someone says that rain is necessary, we want to clarify that within all of it, you don't have options about what the conditions around you may be. But you have options about what practiced vibrational stance you have coming into it. Once you've shown yourself what meditation is and what alignment is and what clear guidance is, then you almost embrace contrast. We watch you. We watch the most evolved physical specimens of your species play themselves against the others in order to prove prowess, maybe, to win tournaments, maybe, but mostly it's this innate natural understanding that when you experience that sort of contrast, a stronger desire is born and that that stronger desire summons more source energy resolve, which leads to not only more satisfaction, but to more. If you can start with the understanding that the dominant mantra or premise of all that isness we're talking about from the inner being part of you that made the decision to come into this physical experience again. That your strongest awareness is, your strongest request is for more. More. More life. More fun. More being. More experience. More love. More. More. More existence. More opportunity. More being. More. Not less. Not cease to be. Continue to be. Ask yourselves, is eternity what your quest is or ending of all things your quest? That's not a hard thing for anyone to answer. The moreness is what is so innate within you. And necessary to moreness is variety that causes you to choose something uniquely more. You didn't come to regurgitate what is. You came to ask for more than what is. Because until you can fashion its vibrational existence out of what now exists, it cannot become then a physical reality. So the environment that exists that you perceive with your physical senses is what inspires you to a quest for more. When someone's rude, you want them to be nicer. When someone's threatening, you want them to stop. Everything causes a desire to be born within you. And as this mass consciousness of billions of people, and it's not just the people, there's all manner of life on this planet that are sending out these requests. These requests are answered each and every one. And you are thriving as a result of all of that. But there is more human suffering while this system is working perfectly than is necessary. And that's why your quest for happiness, your asking for happiness, someone, someone like us who clarifies how the process works. Because you would not have to know any of this. You don't have to know about law of attraction for it to have its way with you any more than you need to know about gravity. Or if you don't know, you'll just fly up everywhere. Why is that person floating around? Oh, he doesn't know about gravity yet. <laughs> Well, that's not how it works. Gravity responds to him too. And law of attraction responds to everyone too. So you don't need to know about this stuff. It's showing itself to you. The laws of the universe are demonstrating themselves to you all day, every day. So you don't need to know this in order for contrast to cause you to want something more. So you build a vortex without even knowing that you are. There's a vibrational reality that you've been building from the beginning of your existence 
And you don't need to know about it for you to build it. And your inner being is responding to it. And your inner being has been there, shining the bright light of what you've asked for. You didn't even need to know that that was there because your happy heart led you there again and again and again and again and again. It's the perfect setup. Your natural innate quest for feeling good will lead you to the expansion that the contrast has provided. It just doesn't get any better than that. You don't need to know about any of that if your happy heart is what's leading you. But so many of you have given up being led by your happy heart. You want to motivate yourself. There have been other things that have taken a stronger thing. No problem. All that did is make you ask for happiness more. There's nothing that makes you renew your quest for happiness more than unhappiness. And so this can't go wrong. Whether you are in this room and hearing these words and understanding the laws of the universe and the way it all works and the way you hook up with you and what your emotional guidance system is, you don't need to know any of this to succeed magnificently. There's just one little thing. Most humans are not that happy along the way. So you have contrast and you launch rockets and the next generation benefits from what you put in the vortex because they come in and they don't have beliefs that fight it. But wouldn't you like the generation that gave birth to it to be the one that receives the benefit of it? Wouldn't you like to be the see it, hear it, smell it, taste it, touch it beneficiary of your own hopes and dreams? Wouldn't you like to create your own reality deliberately? Well, that's what you said, and that's why we came. This is not a question, but it's just, this is life-changing for me, what you just said, on, on a level of DNA, because it helps me to have a relationship with what we call problems as opportunities for clarity. Delicious. It changes everything when I'm in the moment. There is no problem that is not life-giving. Because every problem summons a solution. And the solution is that life coming, you see. Yeah. Bring it on. Bring them on. Bring them on. Bring <laughs> and that on. was my intention. Bring them on. And you gave that makes intention. step five much more easier to understand, doesn't it? Yeah, I'll stay in step five. I'll focus on the problem, but I will be one who becomes solution-oriented faster. Your world is in a place today where so much is right before you for you to contemplate. But so much of the world stays hammering at the problems and pushing against one another when there's all this juicy stuff that you just most recently put into the vortex. Life is extra, 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 extra ripe and ready for the plucking for those who are in the receiving mode and ready. And I stay there a lot. And it's a getting shorter and shorter the time that I'm in that negative emotion. It's there, and then I'm able to remember that negative in the moment. Negative emotion is such a blessed, wonderful thing because negative emotion is pointing out to me how wise my inner being is, how much my inner being loves me, how much work has been done on the solution that I'm not focused upon. You can't feel negative emotion without its counterpart being right there ready for you. Every subject is two subjects, wanted and absence of it. And you can be focused all up and down that stick and you can feel how close you are or how far away you are for what you're asking for. There is no exclusion in this universe of attraction. There's no pushing anything away. There's only attraction, 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 inclusion, inclusion, inclusion. So when a problem comes into your view, and you want to push it away, since there is no such thing as pushing away, since there's only inclusion, doesn't it sort of kind of make you want to go to the other end of the stick that you want to include rather than stay on the problem end of the stick that you don't want to include? Do you hear that? Humans must believe that there is law of pushing away, that there's law of exclusion because they'll stay fixated on the problem. We're going to get rid of this. We're going to get rid of this. Everybody's talking about this. We're doing blogs about this. The news is talking about this. Everybody's talking about this. We're talking about this and we're going to talk about this till it goes away. No, you're not. You're going to talk about this until you create solutions that you don't have access to. So if it's only law of attraction, and it is, when you see something you want and you give your attention to it, you include it in your experience. When you see something you don't want and you shout no at it, you include it in your experience. So 
when you are focused on a problem? Do you want to focus on the problem? Because there's only inclusion. You say, yeah, I'll focus on the problem and I'll get rid of it. No, that's not an option. You can't get rid of it. You can only include it. So if you can only include it, do you want to focus on the problem? Yeah, because I want to get rid of it. No, no, there's no getting rid of it. There's only inclusion. So do you want to focus on the problem? Yeah, because I really want to get rid of it. No, there's no getting rid of it. There's a problem and there's a solution and it's only inclusion. So there's a problem. Do you want to focus on the problem? No. I want to try to focus on the solution and include that in my vibration. Do you hear it? That's the best conversation about law of attraction that has ever been, ever. Wow. Yeah, 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 really good. That got right to it, didn't it? Yeah, I love how deep down the rabbit hole she goes here. Contrast equals clarifying trust. It is, uh, puts the eternalness in eternity. It's necessary. It's essential. Um, you came for more and all of the more is going to come from that contrast. Um, you know, and, and to, uh, to remember, to always remember there's, if there's a problem present, it's life-giving in some way, and it automatically comes with a solution. There's a solution inherent, so there are no problems, only solutions ultimately. And if you can remember that every time you're facing something and you feel like you don't see the way out and you feel like it's all, all is lost, remember, ah, there's just a solution here that hasn't made itself aware to me yet. And and this, you know, when it comes to, um, you know, this idea of an issue or contrast or problem instead of pushing it away if we can become you know like Eckhart Tolle says can I be the space for this there is no exclusion only inclusion include include and and include that the the, the solution is in your vibration and start you know facing your attention towards hmm, what would the solution look like okay I can become aware of the thing that I don't want and just like the Wright brothers who became aware that they didn't want to stay on the ground any anymore they didn't achieve flight by contemplating uh, repeatedly the staying on the ground of things, right? They became aware that they wanted off the ground. They wanted to fly. So what is the solution? How do I make that happen? And start focusing on become aware of what it is you don't want. Include the solution into your vibration. And just knowing that there's always a solution there with the conflict that's happening, with the problem that's present. It's always there somewhere waiting for you to um, to, you know, find the breadcrumbs. And, and, and of course, everything has its season and time too. Sometimes you're not ready to see it yet, but knowing that it's there and it's inevitable, what a great thing to be able to relax into that. Whenever it feels like all hope is lost, you don't know where you're going to go next, what you should do next, knowing like, hmm, I don't know. I don't see the way out. I don't see the solution yet, but I know it is a part. It is inherently a part of the, the quote unquote problem right? There must be the yin to the yang of the problem. So just by knowing that and holding that, that knowing it such, doesn't it? To always know that there's a way out, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And if I just focus on remembering that truth, I'm actually drawing myself closer and closer to it. I'm including it in my vibration in that moment. And I'm going to continue to do that until next thing I know, there it is. And I have more and more evidence of its existence. All right, everyone. Well, here we are in the last, can you believe it's the last week of 2021? A brand new year, new opportunity to try it all again and see what we can, how we can take the learnings from the past, roll them into the future, into the next greatest and grandest version of ourselves. And uh, I do have a song that's appropriate uh, Time, timely, uh, for sure, Old Lang Syne. You guys have heard this song as like the New Year's song. Uh, it actually means times long past. And one of my favorite singer-songwriters just did a rendition uh, of it. I was playing it. My mom said, uh, I didn't remember this, but my, she said, oh, my, your grandmother used to always cry every time this song was played at New Year's. And it, it of course, has that old world. And he does it in a very old world kind of style, uh, as I'll play it here in a moment. And it's just like you know, remembering times long past and, um, 
yeah, it's just a beautiful, it's a beautiful song. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it as much as I do. This rendition by Rue Payne's Old Lang Syne as we head into the new year. I am looking forward to a beautiful one, a magical one full of, you know, maybe won't get what I want, but I'll get what I need. And maybe it'll be what I want too. Who knows? <laughs> Same for you. Until next time, journey well. Love you so, so much. Also, before we queue up today's song, as a quick reminder, don't forget to download the Golden Key audio or ebook as my free gift to you at goldenkey.gift using the Golden Key code Positive Head. And please, if you enjoy my gift, leave a positive review on Amazon so others can unlock their lives with the help of the Golden Key as well. Sign.